Folks, this is the Holy Bro Shuriken. It is a 180 size, ready to fly, well, almost ready to fly quadcopter. Uh, 180 means four inch props. And I first saw this on Bruce Simpson's channel, RC Model Reviews, and the minute I saw it, I went, I have to, I have to get one of those. So uh, it's one of the privileges of having a YouTube channel. I, I contacted Hollybro and said, hey, can I have one? And uh, fortunately, they said yes. And I have to say, I'm even more impressed with it, having it in my hands, than I was on Bruce's channel. Uh, this, is, this is one solid piece of kit. Uh, I'm obviously, you know, I'm going to have to fly it and crash it and see how it holds up, but it is, it is got the plastic sides. It's really solid in the hands. Uh, feels really well made. You can take a look at Bruce's video where he takes the top off and he does his usual RC model reviews take, uh, take on the electronics. And in fact, I'm gonna, just going to let him do it. Uh, he does it in more detail than I probably would and hits all the high points. Uh, inside here, there's a, a single integrated board. It's actually this bottom plate here is the board and it's got all the electronics. It's got the, the ESCs and the flight controller. It's an F3 flight controller uh, and it's got, in this case, it's got a FreeSky S-Bus receiver. You can also get it with a Spectrum receiver or Futaba receiver. I suppose you could probably order it receiver less and put your own on there. So in this case, it's essentially a bind and fly for a free sky radio and that's exciting too because it has been the case for a long time that almost all bind and flies are spectrum and more and more i'm starting to see bind and flies available with free sky receivers and as a tyrannus owner that really excites me okay, let's take a look at what does come with it extra set of props these are 40 40 props uh not strictly speaking bullnose but a nice aggressive square tip i've flown similar props to this on the quadrostereo rush four inch and they were they were quite good We've got our FCC Class B warning. Let's just throw that out. We've got a parts list here if you want to order spare parts. Very nice. And we've got instructions here on how to enter boot mode to flash your flight controller. And this, by the way, is a photo of that uh, circuit board that I told you was in there with all the stuff on it. Very integrated, very interesting here. We've got 1806 motors here, which if this were anything but a four inch setup, I would complain about. Even for four inch, I think copters like the Quadrostereo Rush demonstrate that 2204 or even 2205 can be a very exciting proposition. That being said, 1806, uh, if it was a five inch copter and it was 1806, I would say, ah, trash, junk. What were they thinking? Throw it away, don't buy it. But for a four inch copter, 1806 is acceptable. We'll see how it flies once I get it in the air. I would be happier if these were 2204 or 2205 motors. There is a weight to power trade-off there, but again, I think I think we've demonstrated that, especially with the more aggressive props we're running today on forage, that it can be done. That being said, 1806 is acceptable. Uh, I'm pleased with the way they've mounted the uh, video antenna here, and you can see it screws on right here behind this protective thing, which is protecting the camera. And I think that's terribly clever because it means that in a head-on crash, this antenna ca or this camera cage is gonna protect the antenna from just getting sheared off. Now, of course, it could still take a hit, but it's got enough flex there that it's gonna bend potentially and not damage the actual connector if it was sheared off. Also, of course, we're protecting the camera here. Now, this is a CMOS camera. You can see what, what kind of camera it is there. It is a CMOS camera, so that is not the, the camera that most of us would choose for FPV, but on an almost ready to fly in this price range, I think it's, it's probably acceptable, and it certainly is smaller than the alternative. Everything on here is really well integrated. We've got the X-T60 here. There's an LED display here, which shows you what uh, channel your video transmitter is on, and it is a 40 channel transmitter, so it does support race band. If you want to do that, it's got a push button here, a long push to change the band, short push to change the channel. You can see the channel right here. Very nice, very nice. Over here, we've got some jumpers, and these jumpers let you change the video transmitter from 25 milliwatts to 600 milliwatts. It's a little disappointing that there's not a 200 milliwatt mode here. 600 milliwatts is great for flying by yourself in a field. 25 milliwatts is great for a race, especially an indoor race, where you really need to minimize interference. For fun flying with a group in an open field, I think that 200 milliwatts is a good option to have. It would be nice if that was an option. Maybe even I would, I would vote to replace the 600 milliwatt with 200 milliwatts. 
200 milliwatts is more than enough for a lot of the flying that you're going to do. Uh, and it's way better than 600 if you're out in a field uh, flying with some other pilots in a little bit of a more informal situation. Uh, 25, of course, is, is what you got to do for indoor flying. Let's take a look at what this has under the hood. If we go to the CLI and type version, we can see that this is running Clean Flight 1.12 which is not the most recent version of clean flight, uh, but that's normal to see stuff coming out of a factory with not quite the latest and greatest on it. No harm there. Uh, and it's running the SP Racing F3 target. It's nice that this board uses the SP Racing F3 target because it's so common. It means that pretty much any firmware you wanted to run, you should be able to find a compatible target. If we go to the configuration, we can see that it's set up for a serial receiver using SBUS, but it's a FreeSky receiver set up for serial, which is great, because as we know, serial gives you lower latency than PPM. The min throttle and max throttle are at the clean flight defaults. I'm pretty sure these are the defaults. If they're not the defaults, they certainly haven't been tuned for maximum resolution. We can see that the min throttle is 1150. That could be as low as 1000, and the max throttle is 1850. It could be as high as 2000. These seem to have been set up to match the BL Heli defaults Again, I'm not 100% sure what the BL Heli defaults are, but I have a feeling these have been set up just to match the defaults in the ESCs to save issues with calibration. And this is an area where performance could be improved by doing what I call the max resolution ESC calibration uh, to get more resolution out of your throttle channel. Now, whether this has any flight effect, we don't know. We'll have to find out. VBAT monitoring is turned on, so it is monitoring battery voltage. That's good. And it's set up for a 2000 microsecond loop time or 500 hertz. Now, this is hardly the highest performance thing that you could get, especially out of an F3 board like an SP Racing. We, I would want to see at least 1000 microseconds. Uh, what's interesting here, though, is that if you look down at the cycle time, you can see it's actually at 1000, even though the loop time here says 2000. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Joshua from the future here to tell you I've discovered the answer. The reason that the loop time is stuck at 1000 microseconds, even though loop time is set to some other value, is that gyro LPF is set to 188 hertz. And if you go way back in your memory, or some of you may not even have been around when this was the case, if gyro LPF is enabled at all, then the loop time is locked to 1000. You cannot change it. And I looked at this and, and I thought, well, I'll just turn off gyro LPF and I'll use the soft filter instead. But Clean Flight 1.12 didn't have a gyro soft filter yet. It only had a D-term soft filter. So gyro LPF equals 188 is pretty much the best place to be. I wouldn't recommend turning off gyro filtering if you don't have a soft filter to back you up. And that means that under the stock configuration, this board is going to be locked at 1000 loop time and there's no way to change that. If we look here at the features, we can see that telemetry is not enabled. And that's a little bit of a shame. We've got the FreeSky receiver in here. We know that we're gonna be flying it with a Tyrannus. So it seems like it would make a lot of sense to have telemetry enabled from the factory. The reason that this is not enabled is almost certainly because this copter is available, not just with the FreeSky receiver, but also with a Spectrum receiver or a Futaba receiver. So there's no guarantee from the manufacturer that they'll be shipping it with any particular receiver in it. That being said, a nice additional step for them to take would be to ship the FreeSky ones with telemetry enabled. It would make it easier. I mean, somebody who's buying an almost ready to fly model probably doesn't want to do too much tweaking around on their own. And this would be a really great thing for Holy Row to do. It's an interesting question as to whether the UART is even broken out on the board to make it possible for you to add your own wire to the receiver to allow telemetry to work. And that's certainly something I'll be looking into. A really cool thing is that the Shuriken ships with black box enabled. Now, since this is an SP Racing F3, it comes with 8 meg of data flash on board, which is enough for some logging. It's nice that it's built in, it's nice that it's included, and it's nice that they enabled it. It also comes configured for switch arming, and that's really nice. It would have been so easy for someone shipping an almost ready to fly copter to just, just do stick arming and be done with. But we don't need that in this day and age. We have plenty of channels on most of our devices. Uh, we have plenty of spare channels to use, and it's set up for switch arming, and that's great. 
It's also set up for air mode on AUX2, and that's really nice. These two choices really show that Holybro is thinking about performance. These are the choices that I would make if I was shipping a product because arming, switch arming is better. <laughs> Stick arming is what everybody has done forever, but switch arming is better. It's the performance option in my opinion. And air mode, again, it's, it's the performance option and it's a really bold choice that they've decided to enable it given that some people have trouble landing with air mode on. So it would have been a really easy choice for Holy Bro to go, ah, screw it, For who needs air mode? We're just gonna ship standard clean flight and be done with. But they didn't do that, they shipped it with air mode enabled and that's, I think that's great. Now we come to my favorite screen, the PIDs. And I'm very happy to tell you, and I've checked this by resetting the PID controller to confirm it. I'm very happy to tell you that these are not the default PIDs. Someone at Holy Bro has taken the time to tune this copter. Now is this a good tune? Can I do a better tune? I assure you I'm gonna try to find out. But again, this really shows that Holy Bro is, is doing their part to try and, and deliver to you a good copter that flies well. They're not just sort of slapping a product together and, and dumping it on the market. The roll rate and pitch rate are at 65. And if we go to the receiver tab, we can see that the RC rate is at 90. And that's respectable too. And this is not the snappiest rate in the world but it's also not a, uh, a super beginner rate. This is definitely the kind of rates that which will give you some performance. So more confirmation here that Holy Bro is not targeting just the sort of rank amateur noob uh, to dump a cheap product, uh, a ready to fly product on the market for, for people with, with money to spend. This is clearly being uh, intended as at least a little bit of a performance product. And we'll see when we get to the air. How it lives up to that. We can see that the channel map is set to aileron elevator throttle rudder and this I believe is not the default order for the Tyrannus. It's a little difficult for me to tell. I've just verified this by creating a new model on my Tyrannus and the channel order I got was RETA. However I can't be a hundred percent sure that I didn't change that a year ago. So I'm not a hundred percent sure but I believe that this may not match the Tyrannus' default channel order. And if that's the case, that's a shame because most likely what's happening is that all of these copters are shipping with the same configuration on the flight controller. And then whichever receiver you order, be it Spectrum or FreeSky or Futaba, gets put in there and it's sold as such. But for something as critical as channel order here on an almost ready to fly, a, a cu customer probably would expect to bind the copter and then be able to basically go and fly it. This is the kind of thing that if Holy Bro wanted to go an extra step above and beyond, they could make sure that the channel order was correct for the type of receiver that was being shipped. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this quick look uh, at the clean flight configuration for the Holy Bro Shuriken, ready to fly or almost ready to fly, 180 size, four inch quadcopter. Despite the fact that I had a few nits to pick, I'm actually really pleased and impressed with everything that I see here. So often in this industry, a manufacturer makes a quote-unquote ready-to-fly quadcopter and it is just sort of slapped together. It's kind of a money grab. Uh, the person who gets it has to do so much work to make it fly well uh, and, and, and that's not what seems to be happening here. Holy Bro has taken various steps like including a serial receiver instead of a PPM receiver, like having air mode activated, like having the PIDs tuned, They've taken these steps that indicate that they're interested in delivering a quality product that flies well, and that's really impressing me so far. So there it is, the Holy Bro Shuriken 180. I'm really excited to, to see how this copter does in the air. Uh, <laughs> I've been getting a lot of kits lately and spending a lot of time building, and it's actually really nice to get a product that I don't have to build before I can fly it and, and put it in the air and have some fun with it. So thanks to Holy Bro for sending this uh, and look forward for more videos on this coming up on the channel. Happy flying.